the athletes that are on the team right now because I believe that the throwing out for all that happened in the last five years also the benefits of doing more projects. So my first year was kind of a lot, and it was not what I expected at all. Um, when I got here, um, I was having a lot of issues because I was born with a birth defect that gave me an extra bone in my toe. And so basically when I got here, it, it kind of goes back before I went to college for track because I had done track all four years, but I only switched my advantage to hurdles my senior year. So I was new to hurdles, and my trail leg is my right leg, the foot that I got surgery on. And basically, like, throughout my senior year, like, I was slowly and slowly having issues with it because, like, of all that impact. But, again, I wasn't even using my foot properly because my toe prohibited me from running properly. So, like, I ran all my races in high school flat foot. Like, not a single race that I run with proper form. Yeah, so, never. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my toe literally wouldn't let me. Like, I had to compensate by running flat foot. So, I started having issues towards the end of, like, my season, but then that's when, like, um, I got recruited and everything, and I signed here. Uh, but so when I got here, high school training and like collegiate training are very different. And so like I thought my high school practices were hard. No, like getting here at our boot camp, bro. That it was very humbling. Learned a lot. But when I started doing boot camp, like I was having a lot more issues just because we're and the bounding too. Like we just were doing so much impactful stuff. Like the first few weeks we were here. And I just remember, like, slowly after every other week, like, I couldn't do, like, what they were asking me to do. And so the coaches pulled me aside, and they were like, yo, like, we, like, what's going on with you? And I told them about my toe and everything. And they're like, okay, like, you have two options. You can continue the season and not perform your best because this is, like, restricting you. Or you can get surgery and medically register your season. And I really battled with that because I did not want to do that. Like, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, my whole year gone? Like, I have to get surgery? Like, no. Like, I'd rather just push through it. And I realized, like, I had to get the surgery. Like, it's gonna affect my whole future in the sport. Like, I had, it's better to get it, and like, I just realized, like, it's better to get it now. And also, coming out of it, like, I'm very thankful I did, but like, that time period was rough. But yeah, I redshirted in November, or I got the surgery in November, redshirted my season last year. And yeah, it was, it was pretty hard because that's when indoor season started. Like, it was a little later, but indoor season started kicking up, and they were like leaving every weekend. And the people I spent every single day with, I was no longer with, and I was like dealing with my foot and like in a boo. It was just, it was not fun, but it was a huge learning lesson. I learned a lot, and it just like made me realize and appreciate my love for the sport because like having that time away from it like made me realize like I want to get back to it more than anything. So uh, when I finally got out of the boo, I did my rehab. My rehab was a whole little funky process, but um, yeah, now we're coming back off the surgery, so this is my comeback season, and I'm really excited for it. Okay. That was a lot. Yeah, I know. Oh, Skylar down a yeah. little bit, yo. She crazy. Sorry, y'all. Anyone who knows me knows I, I can go for like hours. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. I want to start a podcast because I can just talk. Like. Yeah, I can see. Like, honestly, <laughs> but it's good though. So, just talking about, you know, like some of the adversity that you faced and everything going through all that. So, I mean, 
that's a lot to go through. And I know like your first year is pretty much like I, what I feel uh, coming into college is kind of like your introduction to life. Yeah. Like this is kind of like a reality check. So you had oh, a similar sure. reality check that I think a lot of us go through mm -hmm. when you first get in, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And then just talking about, you know, where you came from and just all that. Mm -hmm. So like elaborate to me, like, how did you get started in like track and field? Why did you, mm -hmm. why did you do it? When did you start? Of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so um, my dad, there's no casual way of saying it, but like my whole family comes from track. My dad is an Olympic gold medalist in triple jump. He won his medal in 1984. And then my aunt, Jack Dronacruci, is considered like the world's greatest female athlete, and she's the best in her event. No one's beaten any of her records. So, and then my uncle, Uncle Bobby Kersey, coaches so many people, Allison Felix, Sydney McLaughlin, a thing, like, um, uh, Kenny Harrison, like, all, like, the best to do it in my events, and just, like, all my huge inspiration, so, my whole family's track, and I wanted to veer away from it for the longest time, like, I did everything but track, just because, like, of the legacy of my family and my last name, like, it's just a lot, so I've always been, like, oh, no, like, I'm gonna, like, I started with cheer, like, I did competitive cheer, yeah, my dad, yeah hated that he was so bad like he literally like that was he was so mad when i went to that side of things but i did cheer gymnastics like i veered away from it for so long but when i got to high school he's like like it's time like you're doing track and i'm like oh my gosh so i started with long jump and like i was like ass like, not not good at all so then like my senior year, he's like you need to change events and i was like okay like to what he's like i think you'll be good at hurdles and i'm like what i can't even walk without falling like that's yeah. crazy but yeah, I did hurdle senior year, and then, like, just like that, my life literally changed, and here I am now, but it was crazy. All in a year, just, like, it all picked up, because I didn't think I was going to do track in college, like, at all, mm -hmm. but it was basically because of my dad, like, he wants me to carry on his legacy, and I want to carry it on, too, it's just a lot. Yeah, wow, this, okay, so your legacy is just track and field, but getting uh, into it, it was a little bit, like, of a rocky road, just oh, to get sure, there, like, sure. that's a lot, I can't yeah. say the same, because, I mean... I come from a, a, I would say like a sports family mm -hmm. and also like a, a military family, mm -hmm. but like just going down that path and kind of when you're, when you're surrounded by like, you know, a legacy like that yeah. and a family that's already doing it, yeah. I can only imagine like, oh. damn, I got to live up to like, oh, a thousand like, percent. like that, like that's, that's a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, commend you for like <laughs> <laughs> trying you, like it. to even you know go down <laughs> no, that path you yeah, know what I'm saying I appreciate it. no for sure like it's crazy like to me like it just it blows my mind because like when I go to like track meets is when I fully like realize like like who my family is and like the influence they've had on this like sport because like to me like that's just my dad like that's just my aunt that's my uncle but they're like su such like amazing people in the sport and they've done so much and like they're huge role models and it's just like it's all I've always known that but just like actually like realizing it and like especially now that I'm doing track like even when I started high school track like my coaches like automatically put me on varsity without me even trying out because they saw my last name but I was booty like they realized that but like I was not good at first but like it was always little things like that or like I remember in middle school like one of my middle school PE coaches like he'd make me run more because he's like oh you're a joiner like I know you can do it like little things like that and I always like was like what like what does that even mean and like now that I'm in the sport and like I understand like their impact like it's a lot but it's a huge legacy and like I'm grateful to be a part of it and like I want to carry it on like my dad won his medal in the 84 games in Los Angeles and the next well after Paris but the was um, that around the time that Carl Lewis was running yeah yeah in the, the 2026 Olympics um that's they're gonna be in LA mm -hmm. so like my goal or wait am I why, not 2026 2028 yeah Wait, the next like, Olympics are 2024, right? Yes. So is it? Yeah, it's It would be 2028. I just had yeah. the biggest brain fart. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of the... I always do that. Yeah, well, so, we never know because, you know, shit happens. You know what I'm saying? Very true. Very Shout out to very, COVID. Yeah. Oh, don't get me started. Oh we we going to get to that. We're going to yeah. get to that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so my goal is to win uh, a medal in the um, LA Games because, like, that's where my dad won his medal. So, like, a full circle moment. Like, ever since, like, I started taking track seriously, like, that's what I realized, like, my end goal is, like, that would just means so much to me because like my dad literally won his medal at the LA games and like there's like they're bringing them back to LA like and I'll be in my prime by that time because it's later down the road and like that's seriously like my goal like I really hope like that's I, I want that to happen more than anything the whole spiel you got the legacy you kind of giving me like you embodying like 
why I've done what I've done. You know what that's I'm saying? Crazy. That makes me, that's, I, love, I love to hear that. Yeah, it's like, it's past, present, future. Yeah. And it's about adversity and yeah. overcoming that. So, yeah. and moving forward. So yeah. you kind of like, damn, like, I'm like, yo, you the, you, you are the legacy, you know what I'm saying? You got a legacy yeah. going, you're a part of the whole thing here. Yeah. And then you're also trying to overcome it and then live up to what had previously done, but yeah. also create your own future exactly. for it. So. Like I said, she, she she right here. Like this is this is why I'm bringing, you know what I'm saying? People like Sky, shout out to Zay. Yeah, we gonna talk to you too, yes, but sure. we gotta learn about you know yeah. everybody on the team no, and everything. Sure, you know what I'm sure. saying? Because I think it's a lot of you guys that have a lot of potential to become like mm -hmm. somebody. For and sure. all I can say is don't stop. Because it's just like, yeah. you know, it's about how you can outlast all of it yeah. you know how far are you willing to go oh, a thousand percent you know what a, i'm saying a thousand percent even for me it's like damn like i wish that maybe i could have i don't know it's like i made a decision to go down the path that mm -hmm. i chose yeah when yeah maybe there was a chance that i could like mm -hmm. keep going but how far are you willing to do it how mm -hmm. are you willing to go through surgery and yeah. all these things in order yeah. to get to that point where it's mm -hmm. like oh, this is my dreams. These are the things I yeah. want to achieve. So that's going to be like the fight, you know, for life. Yeah, that's, a thousand percent. That's all it is, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, it's, it's just, you know, keep your head up and stay, try to be blessed with it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Keep the faith in what you're doing because yep. it's a lot of, you know, I think potential in that, you know, being your story and how mm -hmm. you could be represented as somebody who is more than just, you know, mm -hmm like an athlete, just yeah. who you are, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially with that. So I'm glad you're doing it. Like, I'm glad you yeah. came to speak to me. Thank yes, you. Yeah, of course, of course. Ain't nobody getting paid for this <laughs> Yeah, still. No, of course, like a thousand percent. I believe in your whole future and everything too. Like, it's very bright and it's good. I'm excited for you, to say the uh, least. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying. Like, yes. that's all we can do it. And we all day. see and appreciate it. Like, it's, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna keep going. I'm, a, yeah. I'm not gonna give up. Like I, I made a vow for myself. I'm like, this one, like I'm gonna try to stick with this because I've been doing film since I was like, like I, I went to Disneyland when I was like four or three for my birthday, mm -hmm. and like my dad, he had to like VHS, mm -hmm. yeah, for you young kids. <laughs> Y'all don't even know what that is. Y'all don't even know what a CD is at this point. That's just crazy. I know. I saw a video the other day of someone. Asking like uh, younger generation like what is a CD and someone like the answers are crazy. It's gonna be bad. Yeah, they ain't gonna know. Crazy. But shout out to y'all born in 2010 and 20. Y'all don't even exist. Y'all older than me. I was born in <laughs> one. But no, nah, for real. Like uh, my dad used to carry around like one of those camcorders, mm -hmm. you know. And we went to Disneyland for my birthday, and like on video, like I was reaching for the camera, like I want to use yeah. it, like. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's always been like there mm -hmm. and around me and I've been doing it since I was, you know, younger yeah. when I was playing football, track. Mm -hmm. If you know, you know, but <laughs> um, yeah, that's, you know, it's just, you gotta keep it going and yeah. you'll see signs in your life that'll point to like, oh, yo, for sure. you know, yeah. like this is, this is the path. I'm leading you down it. How yeah. about you continue to like take this on and Hey, if you do believe, like you know, God gonna throw a lot of things at you mm -hmm. just to see if you'll, if you'll sway or or give up because yeah. that's the thing. It's like, that's what it is, you know. And mm -hmm. I think once it's all said and done, mm -hmm. I think all of the adversity that you know, you know, that is faced, and I keep like repeating this, and it keeps ringing in my head. It's like everything that you face is going to teach you. Oh, this is why I yeah. had to go through that. A thousand percent. You know? Yeah. And it took me a while to realize that because last year, like, I, like, I'm not gonna lie, I was in a really low place after I got my surgery just because I'm like, I came here for track, like, I was so excited for my season and, like, just like that, it's gone, like, don't get to do indoor, don't even get to do outdoor, like, I was just like, why am I even here? Like, I was struggling a lot, but, like, looking back, like, I'm so thankful for it because, like, it just taught me so much about myself mentally because, like, again, my rehab was all mental too like it was mainly mental because I had to like teach my brain how to reuse this like toe because like I literally I couldn't bounce on my foot I couldn't like do anything 
So I just like during that whole process, like I realized like, cause track, everyone knows track is very much mental as well. And that's something I struggled with even previously. Like my mindset, just like, I would ha- like go into a race, like, and if I had a bad mindset, I'd run a horrible race. Like, and I, if I go into the track with like a good mindset, being like, you know what, like I'm gonna do the best that I can do. I always perform my best. And I just think like during that time period, like even though I was like, why is this happening to me? Like, why did I have to get the surgery? Like I'm thankful for it. Cause it just made me 10 times stronger coming out of it. Cause like now I just like, I learned so much during that time period, like just not getting to run. Like even just going to those practices and watching them practice, like just seeing what they're doing and applying it to myself and in my head. Like when I come back, like I need to do this and just work overtime and do what I need to do. But I for sure struggled with that at first. Like there was like a part of me last year that was like, I don't even want, I don't even want to come back to this sport. Like I have to work ten times harder to get back to where everyone else is at. Like a whole year, like I couldn't do anything. But like I'm so thankful for it because it just taught me that I can, and like I just need to try and that I need to apply myself, and that's what I plan on doing. Just keep going. Yeah. That's all you can do, and exactly. it's like, you know, applying yourself or whatever it is that you want to do. You can get it done. Like yeah. truly, like I was. I took the time, like, after 2020, I'm like, okay, I have this idea. I know what I want to do. How far do I want to go yep. to, like, apply myself to, yeah. like, do this type of thing? Exactly. And, like, when I tell you, like, I, what I've created is exactly what I envision. I'm like, damn, wow. Like, I kind of manifested this early yeah. on. And I'm not too surprised with, like, where I put myself mm-hmm. in order to do it. Yeah. But now that I'm here, it's like, damn, like, I'm here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, the fact that you even, like, you know, deciding to do that, mm-hmm. just keep doing it. Yeah. Like, apply yourself to, like, this is my goal. This is where I want to be. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's, if, you know, if the world, if God, if fate, you know, whatever it is that you believe in allows you to get that far, mm-hmm. it'll happen. You know what I'm yeah, saying? a thousand percent. Sure. But it's, it's, it, it's a struggle to yeah, get there. So you sure. can't, you can't give up. You know for what I'm saying? Sure. And that's a message to all you kids, yes. man. Yes. All you kids, Very true. if y'all ever watch this, <laughs> and we get more than like 15 views. Uh, What's good? Just, just, just come here, come here. Just stand right there. Say, <laughs> say hi, say hi, Chris. Hi. <laughs> I got my man, huh? It's a little podcast, man. For what? For what I'm doing. For the, for the adversity. When you gonna put the other one down? The one from Carl? Next week. From Mount West? When I get to it, bro. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get to it, bro. You gonna keep this in? Huh? You gonna keep this in? Yeah. That's why, that's why I wanted to bring you in, bro. <laughs> you, got, you got a feature. They've they been asking about you, man. Why? Because you Chris. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, Chris, I'm going to let you go, man. Right. I'm going to get to Chris. conference, bro. Right. I ain't being paid for this. You know that. All right. A feature from Chris. What was that, sorry? I said that's a feature from Chris yes. right there. That's, that's rare. Honored, honestly. That's rare. Yeah. Chris, Chris might be in the Olympics someday. Is know that I found him first. <laughs> he asked me about conference. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get to it. Whatever, when you get to it? Yes. To it. But I got to, like, you know, pace myself with all yeah. this, you know, because, you know, it's a lot at the end of oh, the day. I bet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying to put it together, you know, and that's a lot of content. So, like, mm-hmm. I don't even know what conference he was asking about. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, is it is it indoor or outdoor though? Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, uh, as soon as I get to it, Chris, I'm gonna call your ass back, yes. and then we are gonna talk about it. Yes. So, but yeah, uh, so let's move on. Let's talk about some you know going on in the real world. Do uh, you you know who Jimmy Butler is? Bro, I have been seeing that on my timeline every... That's so funny. Like, hands down, that shit's hilarious. Like, his whole emo, like, oh my gosh. that That's pretty hilarious. Like, it makes me... It's funny because, like, I could just imagine, like, doing, like, something crazy for my media day like that. But, like, I wouldn't want to, but, like, just seeing him do that is so funny. Like, 
it's hilarious. Like, there's nothing, like, and it brought so much, like, media attention. Like, that's been, like, my whole timeline, like, damn mm-hmm. near. So it's, like, it's, it, was, it was pretty funny. Yeah, Jimmy is, Jimmy is crazy. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to Jimmy. For real. I'm cause. about to go emo myself. <laughs> nah. To be honest. Hella motivating. <laughs> I'm like, starting a whole new wave. Or, I mean, it's been a wave, but just. Sure, I'm just going to have the bang on this way, though. <laughs> It's over my face. I just want to know who did his, like, look. Like, if he did that himself, like, that makes it even funnier. But, like, mm-hmm. I just want to know if, like, he had, like, a team do it. I, I like, know what happened. Damian Lillard decided to go to uh, the Bucks, mm-hmm. and he was upset. <laughs> and he was on camera. He was like, I can't believe this shit. Can you believe this shit? And this man made a decision. He said, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do this emo shit. That's so, I know the Funky. backstory. That's Funny as fuck. Yeah, he was trying to get Damian Lillard to come to the uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the to the Bulls. Oh my god! And then they traded him to the Bucks, and he was just like, Nah. <laughs> like he, his smile went from like, dude. He said, <laughs> Whole face changed. Fuck. All right. Emo, emo, That's uh, crazy. Butler. Nah, that shit was very. That shit funny. was wild. Yeah. But. <laughs> Other than um, basketball, like what other sports? Did you play any other sports besides cheerleading as well? Um, so I did soccer for a little bit. That was interesting. I like literally tried out with no experience. Like this is like like middle school. Like this is long 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 time ago. Mm-hmm. But tried out with no experience. Someone made the team. I don't even know how. Um, and that was where I realized, like, cause I made the team, cause like I was fast. Like they, cause like they they noticed that in the tryouts. But I remember my first game, oh my gosh, I literally scored for the other team. So that that's why there's no future in soccer. I I don't really have the ball coordination either. Like I kind of do, but like it's not really there. I was a defender and like, I don't know. So I did soccer for a little bit and then I really did love cheer. Like I'm not gonna lie, like, I don't know. It was fun because I was a flyer. So like getting thrown up in the air, like all that shit, like it was hella fun. Like, and I was super flexible too. So I could do like all those like fucking tricks and like, I loved it, but my dad hated it. Um, so that was like short lived. And then, um, yeah, honestly, soccer, gym- gymnastics, I did gymnastics like when I was really little all the way up until like high school. Um, gymnastics ain't no joke. Yeah. Gymnastics is fun. Um, but yeah, that was basically it, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Damn, that's a lot. You did a lot growing up. But really? I feel like I know some like I, oh I did tennis too. That just reminded me. You no. Did tennis? But okay, th- yes, but like okay, that's kinda like interesting because so my best friend, like, she plays tennis. Like she's at um Westmont, like it's a it's a college down um in Santa Barbara. But she plays tennis and like her fam her dad is kinda like my dad. Like he doesn't come from tennis, but like he's very like you're doing a sport, like, and he made tennis their sport. So they were kind of on the wealthier side, and so they built a tennis court in their backyard. Mm. So every time I go over to my, like, her house, like, she always would have tennis practice. And the dad was like, do you want to, like, this is before I did, like, any sports, really. He's like, do you want to, like, play tennis? And I was like, I mean, I guess. So I did, I did my little thing with tennis every now and then. I could do, like, the front hand swings, but the back hand, I could not, like, get my brain to do it. Like, I would always mess up so bad, but... Honestly, like, I really liked tennis. Like, it was very, like, it was fun. Like, I did it for, like, three years. Like, I kind of went, I, I don't know if I wish I pursued it, but, like, I, I actually like tennis a lot. Sure, you look like you, you can play a little tennis. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you know, just a little, a little, a little, a little, a little you know, little. Not, not too much. <laughs> Wii Sports. Oh, bro. Wii Sports was, don't even, you know the little battling game? Yeah. I would be taking that shit so serious. Like, I'd be upstairs. Like, you think I'm actually, like, fighting someone. Like, I'm, like... That's so funny. Dude, I loved Wii Sports. Like, me and my brother, like, we're, like that's what we played religiously growing mm-hmm. up. Like, I, I loved Wii Sports. Like, that's honestly what got me in. Like, I don't want to say I'm a gamer, but, like, I do play video games mm-hmm. every now and then. Oh, yeah? And, like, Wii Sports is, like, what I started off with, and then I went to Xbox. But, like, Wii Sports was my thing for a long time. You say you game. <laughs> okay, mean, besides, I mean, besides I mean, what, others, what other games do you play? Okay, so Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Um, I only run S and D though. Like I, I love Search and Destroy. Like I. Wait, is she calling out? <laughs> she, she saying the abbreviations is crazy. Cause I didn't even. I was about to say, what the fuck is S and D? She said S and D. I only run S and D. What the fuck? I literally. I, I mean, I don't know. I okay. It's cause COVID. Like when during COVID happened, like I was in a group of like, uh, with like all my guy best friends, and like I, they knew I had an Xbox, but like I was only using it to like, like I play Fortnite every now and then. Mm-hmm. Like, 
things like that, but, like, mm. they're, like, get Modern Warfare, like, it'd be so funny to play with you, and I was, like, okay, like, I hated it when I first started playing, like, everyone's, like, get back in the kitchen, like, you're, like, bottom of the leaderboard, because I was so bad, so I was, like, no, like, I want to be good at this game, like, I want to be one of those girls that, like, can play, and, like, I don't, I can talk my shit, because, like, I hated just sitting there and not being able to say anything, because, like, I'm literally 0 and 4, like, I actually can't talk. Like, That's it's, heavy, it's, buddy. Like, yeah. I, like, I, I really can't say much. Say, get so, back in the kitchen. <laughs> Like, I heard the craziest thing. So then, like, I started playing a little more. And, like, I wouldn't say I was good or anything, but, like, I got better at, like, sniping and, like, little things like that. So, like, I would start running it by myself. And, like, I started actually, like, getting a little bit better. But I haven't played in, like, a minute. But Call of Duty was, like, my main game. And then GTA, Fortnite, uh, Rainbow. um, I love Rainbow. I didn't even play Rainbow. Oh, I love Rainbow. Rainbow was a lot of fun. And then Overwatch. And then I'm going to throw Rocket League in there, but, like, I'm ass. Like, I, I shouldn't even claim that I play that game, but like I play it every now and then just like with my friends and stuff. But I think that, oh, Friday the 13th, but like my main games are definitely Call of Duty and then um, Rainbow and Overwatch. Those are like, that's my rotation. You playing more video games than me. <laughs> I I don't even game like I used to. I don't even I don't play Rainbow. I don't play Overwatch. I'm so dumb. I play like two, three games and they like, the, the the old NCAA fourteen like I'm an old man I'm so dead. now like I'm I'm playing uh GTA five still mm-hmm. I do play Modern Warfare but I ain't got the new one mm-hmm. Two, I don't got well, the new one either it's technically old because yeah. three about to come out yes yeah so I'm really behind I, I, like, might, I might get that one but I like literally I don't even have my Xbox up here left at home but like I I miss it like I I low key like fuck with gaming a lot like it's fun because like. I just like talking shit, like respectfully, like <laughs> respectfully, like respectfully, and it's so easy to do it like on the game, like it's just and it's fun, like and especially when you're like good at it or like you can actually talk shit, like when I'm top of the leaderboard, like bro, I be feeling like I'm like top of the world, like I have the highest ego, I'm like cussing people, I'm like you can't talk, like oh and four, like get the like a woman's better, like like I kind of feed into it a little, but like because they that's always their first thing to say, like oh you're a girl, like shut up, like shut. up. And I will give clips for anyone that... I Actually, let me show you my clips right now. I have them on my phone. She got clips. Yeah, so... She gonna have to send them. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Cue the clips. <laughs> cue the clips. That's I'm crazy. So Wait, let me, let me find them. I have to, like... It's somewhere in my phone. No, I ain't got no clips. I, the last thing I ain't played... What was the last thing I played? NCAA 14. Mm-hmm. If you know, you know. Because that... Yeah, that I game, don't even know what that is, Dr. That's a uh, college football. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't play like any of the, like the sports games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even play Madden right now because yeah, yeah them them uh, them gambling player packs. <laughs> yeah. Y'all paying to win. I, I just want to play the. I just want to play the game, and work and and get my team as good as possible. They out here buying B bucks for Fortnite. They buying uh. Madden cars and all types of stuff. Like, come on now. Craziness. Like, what, what, what we living in? It's just like to. She got a highlight reel. Oh no. <laughs> you kind of nice. <laughs> you quick scoping. Damn. <laughs> that just like. <laughs> <laughs> She's. So- Sorry, let me this show you my highlights. Sub, sub. No, I have this one, like, it's my favorite clip to show anyone. Mm. Um, I was playing with my friends, and, like, I was doing ass that game. Like, we were losing and everything, and, like, everyone on my team kept dying. Like, it was, like, it was like uh, 4v4, then 3v4, and then it dropped to a, a 1v4, and I was like, oh, I'm going to fuck this up. But I somehow clutched it up. Like, that is my favorite clip. Like, it was crazy. Like, I remember, like, everyone, like, all my guy friends were like, oh, and, like, you're going to die, like, all this shit. And I, like, somehow quick scope one fucker, quick scope another one. And I, it was so crazy because, like, I've never done, like, I've been able to do it, like, consecutively. But, like, just to win a game like that, like, bro, that's, that's honestly my, like, peak right there. Like, I haven't, that was my peak. What's your gamer tag? <laughs> that's, that's all I want to know. What, what is your gamer tag, yo? Cause your gamer tag will tell me a lot about like what what type of gamer you are. Eleven Toho. <laughs> Let me save the clip, damn it. <laughs> 